ineffective communication kills teams. Whether it's football or badminton doubles, come on now somebody, poor communication always leads to a loss. Well, hello and welcome back to the Next Gen Podcast. It's great to have you here with me today. My name is Harry. Welcome back. You join me in Wellington, New Zealand, uh, the capital city, also where my parents live, where we're staying until we head to Brisbane at the end of August 2024. Very excited about that, but that's not what we're here to talk about. We're here to talk about you as the greatest leader that you possibly could be. It is great to have you here with me again today. I'm feeling a bit rusty, I'll be honest, feeling a bit nervous. It's been a month since we last made uh, some content and I'm so sorry about the delay. It's been super busy moving uh, cities and then also on the road doing a bunch of awesome ministry things as well. But you don't really care about that. What you care about is quality content. So welcome back. Whether you're here for the first time or you're back again, our heart for this podcast is that we would be able to equip empower and inspire a new generation of leaders to serve and invest into the next generation. Also want to welcome a special welcome back uh, to all of the Next Gen Nation members, our elite podcast community members. You know who you are. Welcome back as well. And no matter where you are around the world or whatever platform you're on, Spotify, Apple Podcasts, YouTube, iHeartRadio and others, welcome, welcome, welcome. Annalise and I, we don't know everything, but we do know something, and we hope that our something is your one thing that you need to be able to move forward in your leadership journey as well. And I've got to be honest, I am really excited to be jumping back into the Next Gen Podcast and starting the first part of multiple part series. I don't know how many parts it's going to be. It might be three, it might be four parts, but I'm excited to cover this topic. This is part one. We're going to be talking about four things that lead... that. I see, I, I, I'm nervous, I'm rusty. Okay, let me do that a bit again. We're going to be talking about four things your leader is looking for from you. Four things your leader is looking for from you. Now, every leader should be a leader under leadership. Every leader. Whether you're a leader of a ministry, a church, a small group, we should all be leaders who are under leadership. And because of this, we are all going to have leaders who are looking for things from us as we're part of their team. Now, this is not by any means an extensive or an exhaustive list, but these are four things I think that are really important that we need to cover and talk about because they're qualities and attributes that I think team members are lacking in 2024. So I wanna, I wanna talk about these four things and hopefully it's equipping, hopefully it's inspiring, and hopefully it's empowering to help you be the best leader that you can be. So four things that your leader is looking for from you. We're going to talk about the first one today, which is proactive communication or proactive comms. I believe that proactive communication is so important to an effective team. Why? Because proactive communication helps prevent misunderstandings. It helps bring alignment with overall goals and it builds trust within the team. I'll say those three things again. Proactive communication is so important to an effective team. Why? Because it helps prevent misunderstandings, it helps bring alignment with the overall goals, and it builds trust within the team. Ultimately, proactive communication strengthens the whole team. Now, I don't know how you feel about communication, but it's the worst for me when there's poor communication. I just find it so frustrating. As someone who's receiving it, you feel so undervalued, out of the loop, frustrated, and sometimes even confused when there's poor communication. In sports, for example, ineffective communication kills teams. Whether it's football or badminton doubles, come on now, somebody, poor communication always leads to a loss. Communication in the team, though, is a bare minimum. It's, it's a bare minimum expectation that teams know how to con- communicate. But there's another level. Communication, if that's the bare minimum, then there's another level to our communication that we need to lock into so that we can uh, be the best team members we can be. I'm not just talking about baseline communication. I'm talking about proactive communication. The, the definition of proactive means creating or controlling a situation rather than just responding to it after it has happened. When you are proactive, you position yourself for victory. When you're proactive, you position yourself for victory. And after this series, we're going to talk about uh, what it actually means to be a proactive team member. But for today, I want to focus on communication. 
Because I think so many problems happen in church because of reactive communication. Maybe you're part of a church where that is the baseline, is reactive communication. It's constantly reacting to whatever, whatever situations and scenarios are popping up in front of you. But when you react to everything, you're in control of nothing. When you react to everything, you're in control of nothing. I know this to be true because of my own leadership experience. When I find myself on the back foot having to react to situations and circumstances that come my way, the reality is, is that I'm actually in control of nothing. When you're playing sports, if you spot the threat coming, you can resolve issues before they become big. I think it's exactly the same when it comes to church teams as well. When we're reacting, we're not in control of the narrative. We're not in control of what's going on. But when we're proactive, we can spot issues that are coming from a long way off before they get big. And we can actually resolve a lot of issues and help bring reconciliation and restoration. Ineffective communication always leads to loss. Ineffective communication always leads to loss. What does it lead to a loss of? I, I want to I break this down to explain why uh, effective communication is so important, or proactive communication, I should say. The first thing we lose is understanding. When we don't have effective communication, the first thing we lose is understanding. As a pastor, when my team, or as a team leader, when my team don't communicate with me proactively, it's really easy for me to misunderstand and get things wrong. You start to think that your team don't like you, or maybe that they're not as invested as they really are. Maybe they don't care as much because the communication is not proactive. An increase in misunderstanding leads to an increase of hurt and frustration. An increase of misunderstanding leads to an increase of hurt and frustration, both for the leader and for the team members. As a team member, it's so frustrating. Maybe you felt this before. When you don't receive proactive communication from the people you lead. We've all been there, especially if you're a youth leader. You're taking someone home after church or after youth, and you've, you've gone out of your way. You, you've opened the generosity of your heart to drop people home at the end of the event, and you're driving, you're driving, you're driving, you're relying on your uh, passenger, your young person to give you directions, and before you know it, You've driven past the left-hand turn, and then they say, turn left there. That is not proactive comms. That is literally the definition of reactive communication. And how frustrating is it when that happens? You've got to turn around, you've got to double back, and you've got to go back the way you came to try and get them on the right path again. We find it so annoying when there is ineffective communication, when there's reactive communication that happens in our teams. But even though we find it frustrating... How often do we not communicate proactively to our leaders? We find it frustration, frustrating when it happens to us, but how, how often are we frustrating our own leaders because we're not communicating proactively either? You know, without proactive communication, we end up becoming misaligned. We fail to win and we cause what's called an expectation gap. The greatest cause of conflict in any relationship is what's called an expectation gap. It's where I expect one thing, you expect another, and the bigger the differences in our expectation, the bigger that gap is between our expectations is where the tension lives. Often, you can find that arguments and disagreements center around the expectation gaps that exist. An example of an expectation gap might be like this. As the leader of the team, I communicate that I need you to lead your small group, which has a, has a bunch of responsibilities. As the team member, you do that job. You invite people to the small group, you run the study, and you do your job the best that you can. I expected you as a leader to not just do that, but also do an attendance report to, to mark down who was there and report back so that we can keep accurate stats. But you didn't expect that you had to do that. So I told you to run the group, but there was added things there, added expectations that you weren't aware of that increases this expectation gap and frustration, both parties are frustrated because there was an expectation gap. What about this one? Maybe you are a team member that joins the team, okay? And you're excited about joining the team and you expect that you're going to receive everything you need to succeed, including some team training. And so you get involved and you, you, you get started and four weeks down the track, six weeks down the track, eight weeks down the track, and there's still no team training. There's no equipping, there's no empowering. And, and that for you creates an expectation gap. And that expectation gap then creates tension and frustration between both parties where the expectation gap has occurred. If we're going to fix expectation gaps, 
what it's going to require is proactive communication so things actually get resolved. Now, you might say that's a bit of a contradiction because when there's an expectation gap, isn't that evidence that there hasn't been proactive communication? No. Proactive communication is, is, is really defined by once we understand there's an issue or once we feel there's a tension or an expectation gap, communicating about that quickly is the difference between reactive and proactive communication. Without proactive communication, without proactive comms, we can never get expectation gaps resolved. But when we do have proactive communication, we can get them resolved. And we're going to talk about that really soon. But it gets worse, okay? That's, that's why I don't, I don't want to rush ahead and talk about all the good things too quickly. I want to make sure that it's really clear why this is important that we do this well. Ultimately, expectation gaps cause a breakdown in trust. Without resolutions to our conflicts and our tensions, then we have a decrease in trust. When trust breaks down, it's really bad. When you have a breakdown in trust, you start to see the following things happen. You see a decrease in collaboration. You get even less communication between both parties. There's a lack of feedback. There's an increase of holding on to offense. And then problem solving decreases. Or when trust breaks down, uh, there's this feeling that you get as a team member of being used and you start to feel underappreciated. You ultimately don't trust that your leader has your best intentions on their mind. You also get a feeling of overall dissatisfaction around the mission and the team you're a part of. And ultimately, all these roads lead to you leaving the team. Why? Because you feel unsupported, undervalued, and disconnected from your leader. This is all what happens when we're not communicating proactively as a team member, but also as a leader. It goes both ways. But I want to specifically focus on what it means to be a member of a team reporting to a leader who's above you. It's often at times our responsibility to ensure that we communicate the frustrations and the tensions that we feel so that we can best educate or make sure, a better way to put that is to make sure the leader that is above us is aware of the problems and the expectation gaps that we have. Often we say, oh, well, I was hurt by this leader. I was hurt by this person. But the reality is, is that we actually haven't done the communicating ourselves. We haven't invested the time to make sure that we're proactively communicating. We end up reactively communicating. And when we react, we're always more emotional. We're always less in control of our communication. So if proactive communication is so important, let's talk about what proactive comms look like. What does proactive comms actually look like? Well, four things. Number one, C. It needs to be clear. Two, O. It needs to be on time. M is for mature and S is for supportive. It's a little acronym there for you. Oh, you like that? English language. Flex. Uh, C for clear, O for on time, M for mature, and S for supportive. These are the four things that effective comms look like. And we're going to break those down for us right now. The first one is C for clear. How easy is your communication to understand? I know it might be easy for you to understand, but how easy is it for your leader to understand? Do you actually know what you're trying to say? How succinct is it? Also, not everything needs to be said. So what is it that you need to say and then say that as clear as you possibly can? Also, what forum are you using to communicate? When it comes to clarity of communication, it's really important because sometimes I think we get the forums around the wrong way and it sends the wrong message um, through the wrong method. What I mean by that? Well, there are different forums that we have to communicate. Number one is email. Number two is text, a phone call, a face-to-face, group messaging. All these different forums communicate a different level of uh, emphasis when it comes to the clarity of your message. Now, not everything should be in a text message. We prefer that because it feels less confrontational, but that's not honoring and it's not helpful all the time. Some things should be in a text, by the way. Some things that are a phone call could just be a text. And this is the nuance of understanding your leader and communicating to their liking. For me, for example, if you were in my team, I love a phone call. I would rather have 27 phone calls in a day than 27 back and forth text messages talking about a topic. Just jump on a phone call. Some leaders love a FaceTime. Some leaders prefer a really detailed email followed up by a really good face-to-face. Listen, whatever it is that your leader likes, it's important to communicate with clarity on their forum. 
your leader might like a short email outlining the main talking points and then having a quick face-to-face around some coffee. It's really important that we communicate clear and we don't muddy the communication through saying things that we don't need to say and also through using the wrong forum. Proactive communication is clear. Okay, that's the first one, clear. Number two, O for on time. The timing of communication really differentiates between proactive communication and reactive communication. When I was a ministry school student a long time ago in Bethlehem, so the Holy Bible says, I was, uh, it was over 10 years ago, I was taught the principles of time management. And I think that the principles also relate to proactive communication. This is what we were taught. Early is on time. On time is late. Late is a disaster. I like that. Early is on time. On time is late. And late is a disaster. Now, like I said, that is in the context of like time management and like arriving on time to meetings, being punctual. But I think it also works for proactive communication. I don't think it's ever too early to communicate something unless you haven't fully formed a thought or you don't know what you're trying to say. Once you recognize there's an expectation gap, seeking clarity through your communication is proactive. If you understand and you sit on it for too long, well, now you're not on time. And remember, on time is late. We want to make sure that our communication proactively is early so that it's on time. When, you've, when you have a thought and you start to see that you're feeling a certain way, communicate. Get ahead of the problems before they become big. Proactive comms are on time. The third one is M for mature. It's so important that we keep our communication mature and respectful. As time goes on between you and your leader, this, this thing called familiarity can begin to creep in and break down the honor between both parties. When it comes to proactive comms, we need to make sure that it stays mature. What do I mean? Well, in the following ways, we need to have maturity. Number one, in our response. We need maturity in our responses. How will we respond to situations and challenges that we are facing? Will we let our emotions overflow or will we stay calm? Will, will we be slow to speak or quick to listen uh, and quick to listen? Or will we be quick to anger and quick to talk? Will we seek to understand? Will we be defensive or will we be understanding? We need maturity in our response. But we also need maturity in our content. What words are we using? What topics are we trying to cover? Not every opinion or hot take needs to be said. Think about how mature your content is as you're communicating. Be careful to read the communication right too as well. Like, don't throw in five jokes and the one thing that you really want to try and communicate buried in there. It muddies the message. So make sure you're mature in the content that you're bringing. It's really important when it comes to problems that you have that we uh, uh, apply this maturity. We need to make sure that we're really clear. We need to be open to being wrong. That's maturity is like, hey, I could be wrong but I was just thinking this and I'd love to chat with you. This is something that I use as a phrase all the time because I'm really open to the reality that I could actually be wrong. So I say all the time, hey, I could be wrong, but I was thinking this, I was feeling this, I saw this, I'd love to chat about it. That's maturity. Number three, you need to be mature in our tone. Can I encourage you that honor actually still matters? Like it's one of those things that like, it seems to be getting lost in, in the reality of ministry at the moment. It actually still matters. Honor still matters. God promotes, not man. So if you can't honor the person that your leader is, honor their position because God promoted them to that position. How you speak to those who lead you is super important. Having a mature tone enables peace and quick solutions. It also removes any concerns of arrogance and pride when you communicate with respect, honor, and love. The last thing we need to have uh, here in terms of uh, uh, proactive comms, the last one is S, supportive. A lot of the communication that your leader is going to receive in a week is negative in nature. It's complaints, it's negativity, it's harsh feedback. Having their team proactively encourage them is huge. Being a pastor and a leader of a team is an incredibly hard gig. You think you have it hard leading young people. Well, leading the leaders of the young people is an incredibly hard gig. It's hard physically, emotionally, 
mentally and spiritually. When I used to receive a text as a pastor and as a leader on a Thursday from someone in my team who was encouraging me, just saying that they were praying for me uh, for the coming Sunday, it would stir my faith like crazy. It just reminded me that I'm not alone, that I've got a brother or a sister in Christ like holding faith with me for what we're doing. Listen, I want to encourage you next-gen pastors. I want to speak specifically to the team leaders who report to someone else above them. Do this for your upline as well. Do this for your senior pastor. Do this for your generation's pastor. Do this for whoever it is above you because it's going to change the game for them. I want to give you some great supportive things that you can say proactively. You, you could say things like this. Hey, thank you for your leadership. I'm so excited for the message this week. It's going to be anointed and it's going to change people's lives. Thank you for your sacrifice. Thank you for paying the price for a generation. Hey, is there anything I can do for you? What specifically can I pray for? I just wanted to take a moment and thank you for your encouragement. These are some really great phrases that you have to mean before you use them, okay? Don't just go, oh yeah, the Next Gen Podcast, I learned these phrases. No, actually mean them, but bring them to the table and encourage your pastor. Proactively communicating your support changes your leader's life. So here we go. Those are the first of the four things that your leader is looking for from you. I hope this has been helpful. I hope that it's been uh, encouraging, well, challenging more than encouraging uh, but it's encouraging because it's something really simple proactive communication don't be reactive in your communication anymore one thing i didn't mention in here that i should have mentioned in the body of the podcast is like if you're going to be away the moment you know you're going to be away communicate also ask yourself how often am i being away that's another thing for another time anyway so don't be reactive in your communication respond in the group chat when your pastor puts something up don't just put fire emojis I'm talking to you. Don't just put fire emojis. Get in there with some encouragement. Get in there with some communication. And I want to encourage you to proactively raise concerns. Before problems get big, let's communicate about them proactively. Make sure that your proactive comms are clear, on time, mature, and supportive. I said something at the start that I want to come back to. When you're proactive, you position yourself for victory. Why is it that so many teams are hard to build? Why is it that so many teams are hard to be a part of? It's because we're not positioned for victory because we fail to be proactive in our communication. So I want to encourage you, every leader, be proactive in your communication. It's one of the things that your leader is looking for from you. Let me know what you think, though. I'd love to hear your thoughts. You can email me, Harry, uh, sorry, hello at harryslade.nz.com. That's hello at harryslade.nz.com. Feel free to flick me an email. Let me know what your thoughts are. Send through some questions, too, if you have any questions about this topic. We're going to be uh, answering those questions on the Q&A episode. Make sure you register as well to be part of the Next Gen Nation for your question to be answered. Hey, uh, I just want to encourage you too, though, on those comms. Just make sure they're clear, on time, mature, and supportive, eh? That was, that's me just re-wrapping the rap. Anyway, that's it for this episode of the Next Gen Podcast. Thank you so much for joining me on every platform that you're on, no matter where you are around the world. Make sure that you like, rate, and share this with all of your teams or people that you think would benefit from this. We spend no money on advertising, and we want this to bless as many leaders as possible. So it would be a huge help if you could get this out far and wide. Uh, if you do repost on social media, please make sure you tag me in it at Harry Slade NZ on socials. I'll repost it for you as well. If you're on YouTube, subscribe to the YouTube channel. If you're on Spotify and Apple Podcasts specifically, rate and follow as well. Now, I've mentioned the Next Gen Nation a few times. You might be wondering, how do I be a part of this exclusive podcast community? Well, I'm glad you asked because it is free to register if you'd like to get free copies of the show notes and have exclusive access to Q&As that we have away from the podcast platform, plus a whole bunch of extra things, including access to close friends, which gives you all of that extra content. It's a mouthful of things to say. All you have to do is register for free. Head to the website, harryslade.nz.com. That's harryslade.nz.com, and you can register for free. Be part of the Next Gen Nation. You don't want to miss out. Hey, that's it for now, though. Listen, every Next Gen leader, be encouraged. Your story is changing history, leading the legacy, and changing the tide. So don't quit. Keep the grip, and I'll see you very soon back here on the Next Gen Podcast. Peace.